Hello. I wonder how Lent is going for you so far. The 40 days of Lent are meant to be like a desert experience. We're reminded of Jesus' time spent in the wilderness, where he was deprived of food and drink and human company, and where towards the end he was tempted by the devil. Many people have said how our experience of lockdown for the best part of a year has been like a desert experience. We too have been deprived of many things we enjoy, the company of the people we love, many of our favourite experiences which give us life, going out for meals, meeting with friends for coffee, going to, sh going to theatres, concerts, going shopping not just for food, and of course worshipping together in church. Many of us have really missed these activities and are really looking forward to returning to them as soon as they are allowed. We've had to fall back on our own resources, confine ourselves to our homes for much of the time, and it has been hard. One of the challenges for many church members has been how to keep our faith going when we're not allowed to worship together in church. We've been deprived of Christian fellowship in person. We've not been able to share in Holy Communion. Worshipping together in word and song has been difficult for many of us. I know some, of, some people have found it difficult to access our Zoom worship, or even if you have the technology, it may not be to your liking. We're all different and have different needs, likes and preferences. So if we have not been able to join together in worship, what have we been doing to keep the Spirit of God alive in our hearts? I compare this to burning coals in a fire. If you take a piece of coal out of a burning fire and place it on the hearth, what happens to it if you leave it there? It goes out. It becomes cold and it doesn't burn. When we join, don't join together in worship with other Christians, our church family, and when we don't do anything to fan the flames of God's Spirit in our hearts, eventually we too go cold. Our love for the Lord wanes. We're not inspired or encouraged by the faith of others, and we wander away from God's ways. I wonder if this has been true for any of you. We've done our best at the White Horse team to put out resources to our church members and people on our electoral rolls, and others whom we're in touch with. We sent out a newsletter online each week, and a paper version delivered through the doors of those not online. We provided the readings for each Sunday and a reflection from one of our staff team, as well as items for prayer, news and notices of events taking place to keep all of us in touch with each other and with God. We hope that as well as these things, you have been able to sustain a life of prayer and of spiritual nourishment for yourselves. Perhaps you've been able to take up something during Lent to stimulate your faith and to keep going through these difficult times. You may have been tempted to give up, to wonder what the point of it all is. And if you've got out of the habit of attending church on Sundays, you might have been tempted to give up on God altogether. If this is the case, then I would like to encourage you. Even when we haven't been together in church on Sundays, many of us have been worshipping together on Zoom. Many of us have been praying, reading the scriptures, and we've seen God at work in our lives and in the world. It's been good to see people supporting our courses reading books, praying and caring for one another. For many people, this time has been an opportunity to take stock of their lives, to review their commitments, and for some it's been an important time for focusing on God and learning more about his ways and his purposes for us. We're looking forward to gathering together in person, we hope on Easter Day. In the meantime, let us use these days to give thanks 
for all that God has been doing among us, and give thanks for his continued love for us. The flowers and the blossoms appearing in our gardens and on our trees remind us of new life, of hope on the horizon and of a new start in the weeks and months ahead. As the psalmist puts it, Psalm 105, he says, He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. Let us pray. Loving and ever faithful God, as the seasons change, the days lengthen, and storms and sunshine alternate. Help us to face the uncertainties of life and the capriciousness of the weather, rejoicing in the light of your presence, knowing the warmth of your constant love, and walking with you through the challenges and delights that each day brings. Amen.